Thank you, Madam Chair. Administrator Wheeler, thank you for coming. You. Uh, I want to talk to you uh, today and discuss the Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Uh, the Clean Water Fund provides communities, as you know, with low-cost financing, and I think that's an important aspect of it. It's financing for water quality infrastructure projects, and it's a, it's a critical tool for Florida uh, in, in addressing a number of our, our water challenges. There's a massive disconnect uh, in this fund, uh, Mr. Administrator. On the one hand, Florida has the, has the third most significant infrastructure needs in the nation, according to the EPA's Clean Watershed Needs Survey. So third highest needs, yet Florida is receiving the third lowest uh, in the country allotment. Again, according uh, to the EPA, it's a result of an antiquated formula uh, not uh, the agency's fault. It's from a 1987 law uh, that Florida receives the third lowest allotment. Uh, EPA's acknowledged uh, in a 2016 report to Congress and the, that the Clean Water State Revolving uh, Fund allotment, it acknowledged that, quote, in the EPA's report, most states do not currently receive appropriated funds in proportion to their reported needs or their population. Uh, which has demonstrated the inadequ inadequacy of the current allotment. The report also states, quote, the weighting and factors that were used to establish the formula for the original allotment are not known. So basically, and the Congressional Research Service says the same thing. In fact, they said it's even difficult to guess how this formula came about in the 1980s. That's probably not a surprise to some uh, to some people. Obviously, Florida's population has exploded. We're gaining 1,000 people per day. This disconnect is unacceptable, given our needs. So bottom line, Mr. Administrator, I, and I recognize this is a statutory issue, um, or Administrator Wheeler, uh, do you agree that it's reasonable for Congress to relook this 30-year-old formula, given this, given this disconnect? I have to be careful. I, I need a permission from OMB before I uh, um, endorse legislation. I will say when I worked in the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, we tried to change the formula three or four Congresses in a row. Um, and my staff and I worked at, at trying to update it. Um, we spent a lot of time and we ran into a lot of um, roadblocks from states who would have done worse yeah. under the changes to the program. What, what you but I, will, will you commit to working with me on this issue yes, as we look to reauthorize the program and, and next year's water bill? Yes, we'd be happy to work with you on that. All right, great. And separately, this is National Estuaries Week. I want to thank you for the good work that the EPA is doing in administering the National Estuary Program. I have the Indian River Lagoon uh, in my district. In July, this committee passed HR 335. Uh, this, the South Florida Clean Coastal Waters Act of, of 2019, the legislation established an interagency task force on, on HABs to really get some empirical data behind that, that issue. Will you submit for the record uh, what, the, uh, what the agency is doing in reducing algae blooms and how you think your agency can contribute to this task force? And in the interest of time, could you also submit for the record uh, what the agency is doing on coastal resiliency uh, in, in helping states that have coastal resiliency problems with rising seas? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Administrator. And thank you. Madam Chair, I yield my time. Thank you.